Good evening and welcome back. Uh, you join me back in the garage where obviously you've seen me before if you've uh, followed lots of this series. Um, this evening uh, it's time for a bit of an oil change. Uh, it's just about overdue so I'm just going to jack the car up um, and yeah just have a bit of a, a quick service so oil and filter uh, a lot of the other stuff has actually been done uh, throughout the summer so no real need to do anything more but um, the oil is due just on time rather than mileage so going to crack on with that. Simple selection of tools used for this job. Um, oil filter wrench, super handy. Uh, I've lost count of how many hundreds of oil filters I've taken off for that. Uh, and obviously the tool to take off the sump nut. Uh, new filter from the local motor factor. Nothing special. So just while the oil drains, I've also taken off the old filter. Um, so yeah, just wait for the oil to fully drain out of it and uh, yeah, we'll drop it back down. Bit of oil into the filter just to lubricate it as it goes on. To be honest, the oil that's just come out of the car has probably done about 300 miles, but as I say, it's actually just due more on time than anything else. So um, I always try and adhere to the service schedule. Uh, really don't want to drop my camera in that, but yeah, it looks pretty clean. Meanwhile, the new filter's on, uh, so now it's just time to top up with the oil. Uh, I was actually sponsored by Morris Lubricants a couple of years ago um, with the Blendline Rally Team Saxo for my rallying exploits um still got a couple of bottles left it's um it's great stuff i've used it in the saxo for years um with absolutely no issues with overheating or uh, temperature or pressure issues and i've used it in the clear for the last couple of years as well uh, and it's been really good says blokes can't multitask eh? Another bit of maintenance I did, this battery that had been in the car for probably 12 months, but throughout a lot of lockdown, so I had a lot of standing, uh, it died, it gave up the ghost, it literally, I'd drive it for half an hour, switch the car off, switch it back on again, and um, it would be dead. So, uh, spent a bit more this time, as I knew the car was going to be used a bit more, so um, yeah, splashed out on an XI battery, um, which should hopefully, I'll keep it charged a bit more as well, but should do the job a whole lot better. Uh, you joined me in a really cold garage this morning. Um, I've been kind of putting this job off for a little while, but finally decided it's time to replace these uh, HT leads, replace them up with some MagnaCore um, high performance ones, which should not only tidy things up, but also look a little bit neater as well. Um, so you join me just starting the job this morning. As you can see, and I think I mentioned it in an earlier video, uh, there's actually one of these leads um, is a short one, which is from a different set. Uh, hence the reason it's had to route the shortest way rather than routing the proper way. So that's kind of one of the things that was bugging me a little bit. Um, whilst the 
inlet manifold is off, I'm also going to give it a lick of paint. Um, as you can see, it's just started to flake a little bit. This paint that's on there is probably um, six or seven years old. Um, so it's time for a little bit of a refresh. Now, the other thing to do is obviously to number the leads that are coming off. Uh, it's quite important to get the routing of that right. So they are numbered on each lead, as you can see, um, but making sure that they go back on in the same order, uh, referring to the pattern of the, the coil pack is also hugely important. Um, so now the manifold should come away from the head. I've just unplugged everything. There we go, job done. So we'll give that a clean up and a lick of paint. Meanwhile, quick inspection over here. Uh, so we've got a little bit of oil just sat in the top of the, uh, the wells here, but I'm not overly concerned about that. Everything else looks pretty, pretty clean. So then, a brief little update on project Clio 172. Got this exhaust system in. Really didn't know quite which system to go for. Um, had my arm twisted by this one. Um, really pleased with it so far. Nice stainless steel, lovely quality TIG welds all the way around it. Um, the silencers actually look like nice quality as well. So yeah, so far really chuffed. So gonna get it fitted on the car. Also, one thing that some exhaust systems don't include, gasket and bolts, perfect. Um, and all the brackets, so literally everything I need to fit this exhaust system. Um, really chuffed with that. So thanks to uh, Gravity Performance for that one. Right then, ladies and gents, here we go. Excuse the poor lighting. Uh, that was a bit of rigmarole fitting, but um, all good now. But here we go for the first start up. Ah, sounds pretty good. Um, fairly boomy, but nice and uh, nice and refined. So got to be happy with that. Let's let it warm up for a minute. thing I wanted to do just before the car was really used over the winter was to protect the wrap so I ordered a ceramic coating for it now I've used lots of different ceramic coatings on traditional paintwork um, that one was easy so I knew I wanted to use the G Technic products um, normally on paintwork I'm using C2, XO, uh, uh, CSL, C4 uh, and their various ranges of products like that but for vinyl they actually recommended something called Halo um, so I ordered it um, with some new cloths and carefully went about preparing the ceramic coating 
to, to install on the car. Now, the idea behind it is it protects the vinyl from any kind of swirls. Um, it really gives it an excellent shine as well and makes it super easy to, to wash. Uh, and it does mean that you get this awesome um, beading on the, the paintwork or rather the vinyl uh, when it's wet as well, which looks really cool. Uh, but above all, I just wanted to stop that horrible, swirly looking uh, micro scratching that can happen on, on uh, vinyl when the car is being used in uh, gritty or salty conditions.